If you're following along with me right now as I read through the Bible, you just finished the Song of Solomon, which for many of us I think is a flyover book. It's one of these books that's kind of weird to read and you wonder even why it's in the Bible. I made a video about that yesterday talking about reasons why it's in the Bible, but then at the end of the book of the of Song of Solomon, we see this interaction with the woman and the young man and it doesn't give us a clear ending. Like throughout the book, they're constantly kind of pursuing each other in different places and we get these different scenes, but at the very end, it just seems to leave off like we don't really know what's going to happen. It says this in chapter 8, verse 13. Oh, my darling, lingering in the gardens, your companions are fortunate to hear your voice. Let me hear it too. Then the final verse of the book is, Come away, my love, be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. So we assume that they end up together, but we've seen this before where they run towards each other and something seems to happen where they don't end up being together. And the Song of Solomon is reinforcing this idea to us that love is not necessarily only a feeling that we feel to someone, but more importantly, it's an action that we do. Jesus says the greatest love is to lay down one's life for a friend. And biblical love looks a whole lot less like a feeling and more like a decision. And so I want us to take away two things from the book of Song of Solomon. The first thing is, is that, and we'll actually get into this over the next few days as we go through the book of Proverbs, is to guard our hearts not only in a dating relationship, but also with friends. A lot of times we allow people to get into our lives too quickly and too fast. But what this shows us here, how love doesn't have a period at the end of the sentence, it's demonstrating that this can sometimes play into our deep parts of who we are. And a lot of times the trauma that we face in our lives comes from when we let people get too intimate with us too quickly. Guarding our hearts is, of course, a process, and we don't want to become closed off or unwilling to let new people in. But we do have to be wise in who we let become intimate in our lives, because after all, they're a sinner too, and they're not perfect. One example of this is if you can think back to maybe when you had a dating relationship with someone. And maybe it might have been one, two, three, four, five, how many years ago it was. If we think back on that, we still get these emotions that come to us these emotions about someone that we deeply care about. It shows us that love never truly has a period on it. There's always going to be something there. And regardless of how big that something is, it still happens. And I think that's because that's how we were designed to be. We were designed to love people. But if we take that concept and we apply it to the Lord, that there's a never-ending supply of love coming from Him, but that also means there's a never-ending demand for us to always be searching how His love's going deeper and wider into our lives. It says this in Psalm 48, 9, O God, we meditate on Your unfailing love as we worship in Your temple. So that's my encouragement to you, is that God has designed us to be in love with Him in a way that causes us to meditate on His love, in a way that causes us not to put a period after the cross, but have a never-ending story about how God's love is changing our lives. If this encouraged you, then tomorrow we're going to be going through the book of Proverbs, so you should subscribe, and we can be through the whole Bible together because that is an extremely important task for believers to do in order to grow closer to Jesus.